Hello guys, welcome to this video. This one is a requested question for this number four, right? So part one, show that each angle of it, so each interior angle of a regular octagon is 135. So first thing you have to know is how many sides does the octagon has? So it is has eight sides. Regular means all the sides are equal, so we can find the interior angle. So how do you find the sum of all the angles we have a formula so sum of all angles is equal to number of sides minus 2 times 180 so same thing here let's find the sum of all the angles so it's number of sides is 8 minus 2 times 180 let's see what we get that should be 1080 that's the sum of all the angles in the octagon. Now for each angle, since all the sides are equal, it means that all the angles are equal. So we have to divide by the number of sides, which is divided by 8 to find the one angle. That will be 135. Okay, this is shown as required for part 1. Now for part B, we have half of an octagon, as you can see. It says in the diagram AB, B, C, C, D, D, E are four adjacent sides of a regular octagon, meaning that all the sides are the same. Okay, the same, 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 same. Okay, good. Now, what's next? Let's see what do we have. We have F, A equal to uh, F, B equal to F, C and F, E. So these four lines are the same as well. Now, C, F meets B at the point G. Now question part one, calculate the angle x. So pretty easy. Since we have shown that the interior angle is 135, so this will be 135, right? So now if you look at this triangle, we have triangle C, D, E, so, and these two sides are the same, so we know that this is also going to be x. So how do you find the angle? We can just do 180, minus 35, 135, divided by 2. So x will be 22.5. Now the next one, we have to find the angle y. So how can you find y? Let's see. So to find y, we can use this one. Because we know that this is 90, and this is a isosceles triangle. So this one will also be y. So these two angles have to be the same. So let's find out. So 180 minus 90. 90 will be these two divided by 2. So y has to be 45. So y is 45. Okay. Now find the angle z. Z is this one. So one thing we notice is that we can first find this angle. Right? So how would you find this angle? So let's not confuse ourselves. So this, same as this, same as this, as this. They're all different, not the same as everyone else. So these two are the same. F, E, and F, C are the same, according to you. Okay. So Z will be this angle. So what we can find first, let me see. So we can first find this one. Because we know that the interior angle is 135, so this will be 135 minus y minus x. So let's do that. So 135 minus y minus x. That should be 67.5 degrees. Now, now since you know this angle, we also know this angle because it has to be the same. Because as you can see, FCB is an isosceles triangle. So that will be also 67.5 degrees. So Z will be the third angle of the triangle. So 180 minus 67.5 minus 67.5, that should be 45. So angle Z is 45. Okay. Now last we have, find the angle of T. Where is T? T is this one. So what is this angle here? So pretty easy. Since this is 45, this is 90. 
we have 180 minus 90 minus 45 that has to be 45 okay now this is an also an isosceles triangle so this and this has to be the same so we have 180 minus 45 divided by 2 that should be 67.5 Okay, so angle T will be 67.5. Now for part two, write down the special name given to the quad BCEF. So let's see what can we um, find for that. So B is right here, C, E, F. Now as you can see, we have, what do we have? We have this line is parallel to this line. So why, we do, why do we know that? Because we know this because angle Z and angle Y are the same. As you can see, it means that these two lines are parallel. Given that these two lines are parallel and they are joined by these two lines, it has to be a trapezium. So it is a trapezium. Now for part 3, given that FC is equal to 10, calculate C. So FC is where? FC is this line. Find C. Now so let's, let's take out the triangle to see what can we do. So here we have this triangle. Okay. So that will be uh, C, F, E. And we know that FC is 10. And this angle here will be uh, y, which is y is 45. We have to find the side C. So we can use Sokatoa because it is a right angle triangle. Okay, so let's see what do we use. This one is your A side, A, A. This one is your hypotenuse, so you have to use cos. So cos of 45 is equal to C, sorry, 10 over C. So C will be 10 divided by cos 45. So we have to use degrees. 10 divided by cos 45 should be 14.1. So your length of C will be 14.1. So now one question you guys may have is, how do I know this is 90? How is that possible? The reason why is, is is because since all this side are the same, as you can see, this, 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 this are the same. So when I draw a line in the middle of those right below, it has to give you because this has been, because this is also equally half in half. So when you join these two, it has to be straight below. So that's why I know it is 90, okay? So now moving on to the other question. So for part four is show that the triangle CGE and triangle FGB are similar. So let's see the diagram to show how they are similar. So first let me show how I'm going to prove this. So part 4a to show that triangle C G E is similar to triangle F G B. We have to show that we can do this trick. So we not trick, but we have to we can show that their corresponding angles are the same. are equal. That is one way to show that they are similar. So let's have a look. So we have this triangle and this triangle. So first thing as we have observed, the triangle has angle Z is equal to angle Y. So these two are the same. So let's write this down. So for part number one, we have the angle B, F, G, which is angle Z, is equal to the angle E C F which is angle Y so that's 
one of the angle of the C. Now next one, we can show that because this line and this line meets at the point G, we know that these two angles have to be the same because they are vertically opposite to each other. That's why they are the same. So let's write this down. We have B, G, F is equal to C, G, E. And the reason is because they are vertically opposite to each other. Now, of course, when the two, two angles are the same, the third one has to be the same as well. Okay, so by showing this, you have proved that these two triangles are similar. Now, let's move on to part B. Find the area of, find the ratio of the area of CGE over FGB. So let's see how can we show the, uh, the ratio, right? So what do we know about those two? So let me see. So we have we have this we have F C is given by ten. This is one side of the so basically we have to compare the corresponding side. So if you observe, we will have this side is the same, so this angle has the same, is the same as this one. So this corresponding side angle will have this side and this will be having this side so let's compare those two sides right so we have to compare the side of FG over GC now we know that FC is 10 we have to find FG to find FG we can just um, what can we do we can take out a a triangle and see what's possible let's see if that's possible because FC is equal to what equal to 10 this also has to be 10 FE has to be 10 because these two are the same now let's see what else can we show mm, I guess we can use, use just that well this is 10 this is also 10 over here we can use so there's so many things we can use we just have to choose which one we want to use okay now we have to find the angle in this triangle so let's use this angle what is this angle so first we can find we can find this this red angle or oh, we don't need that it's up to us to do because there's so many ways to actually use it's kind of a lot of ways to show but let me just choose one to make it easy for you guys. Um, can compare those two or those two. Let me use. Okay, let me use. I will just use this one. It is easy because we don't need to calculate anything, right? So this is ten. Since F E is ten, we know that F. B is also 10 because they are the same. Okay, now we can use this side, this will be corresponding to the red angle. Now, corresponding to this red angle is your side CE. CE is equal to 14.1. So, we can compare these two corresponding sides. So, let me draw something again to make you guys understand what we are comparing because this diagram is quite confusing. Let me draw something else, right. So here I have my uh, BF, that will be C, that will be F, that will be B. This joins with this one. Now I have this one. Point E. And then I have this joining with this one. Right, so we have to um, show that the area, the ratio of the area of triangle CGE over area of triangle FGB. 
Okay. So this is your point G, obviously, where they meet in the middle. Now, so one thing I, I want to show is I want to show first which angle are corresponding to each other. So these two are the same, right? They are corresponding with each other. Now this one is the same as this one because it was shown that these two are parallel. And the last one, this one, is the same as this one. So before we can compare the ratio of area, let's compare a ratio of their sides, of their corresponding sides. So from part one, we have seen that Fe is the same as this one, is the same as this one, as you can see here. Fa, so Fe is the same as Fc and Fb. So these all are have length of 10. So let's write 10, 10, and 10 for now. Now we have this side C that we have found to be having a length of 14.1 from question part 3. Now we can first compare the corresponding side because here we have a small triangle BGF. So we have the angle, this one, the red one. The corresponding side will be 10. So I write 10 on top. Divide by the corresponding side of this red angle, that should be 14.1. Now, this is the ratio of the side. Now to find the ratio of the area, we have to square the side. Okay, so 10 divided by 14.1 square, that should be 0 0.5. Sorry, so I think I got this upside down. So we have to write the big one above and the small one below. So let me write this down again. So the big one is G, so it is CG, so C. So CG for the big one first. So big one is 14.1 over 10 square. You have to follow the order as well. The, on top we have the big one, so we have to choose the big side. And this one is the small one. And let's see what we have. That will be. 14.1 divided by 10 square. 1.99. That is your ratio of the areas. Okay, so I hope that was somewhat helpful. And definitely, uh, I apologize for the confusion here because it was uh, only one more question, so it should be much easier to find. As you can see, we have these sides already. We'll just compare the size to find their ratio and area in the end. So I hope that was somewhat helpful. As always, thank you for watching. I will see you soon.